Hi folks, uh, my name is Ian Carey. I'm a Bay Area trumpeter and composer, and uh, I thought that I might go through um, one of the movements from my piece Fire My Head, uh, which is coming out this week on CD um, and digital, and uh, talk about the movement and, and uh, play it and show the score as we go along and kind of point out some things that might be interesting as we go along. Um, hopefully interesting for somebody. So um, go ahead and dive right in. This is um, the third movement, which is called Internal Exile. The title for Internal Exile refers to the idea of people sort of withdrawing from society and taking comfort in their hobbies and their art and their uh, relationships and uh, kind of sequestering themselves from the world. Um, and I had no idea at the time, of course, that uh, by the time the album came out, we would all be under mandatory internal exile. It starts with a three-part canon in the horns, um, which is something that I knew that I had wanted to write for a while and decided to give it a go. And of course, um, just to make it a little bit more interesting, I made it in 7-8. So here we go. So figuring out how to put this canon together was kind of an interesting puzzle um, that involved writing uh, five bars at a time and sort of layering them on top of each other. And then deciding how to connect it to the rest of the piece, I thought it would be interesting if the horns kept going on doing their own thing and I added the piano and bass and drums as sort of a counter feel. Some of those big piano runs. Uh, kudos to Adam Shulman for learning those for me. Now we're into three. And the shape of the cannon is sort of moving in the direction of the eventual theme that's coming. The piano figure will come back. And that little line there, da 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 da, that's the um what I call the anxiety motif, comes out back throughout the piece. Here's the theme proper. Now the counterpoint starts with the Fast and Furious here. to put these little mini free improvisations in there. Now this little chorale here is actually borrowed from the opening movement of the piece. This was the first um, movement I completed, uh, but I had uh, fairly, it was fairly far along in a couple of the other movements at the time. There's that anxiety motif again. Um, so I was able to look for sort of connective tissue from some of the other parts of the piece to uh, kind of tie this all together. Now we're into the first solo, which is me. Um, and you'll notice that I put the backgrounds kind of in different places on different choruses, just to kind of mix things up. You also know, notice a lot of... Um, 
sort of chords, inverted chords. Um, I was, here comes the first background. Um, I was doing a lot, a lot of uh, playing Bach chorales um, when I was writing this music. I would start each day just by um, playing through and kind of messing around in a Bach chorale. And so that kind of got me thinking about root movement uh, and really trying to come up with interesting ways to have the root movement and the, and the chords on top sort of um, complementary, complementing and contrasting each other. First time through the, the uh, backgrounds are on the A sections, and uh, second time through for A and C, significantly they're on the bridge. No, uh, other way around. No. Okay, now we get to the piano solo, Adam Schulman. And even though these two first solos are on the same form, that's that's it for this piece. The remaining solos are going to be on, on different forms. It's something I really um, learned from Maria Schneider to kind of emulate the idea of giving each person something different to, to work with. And one of the things that you can just kind of learn playing in my band is that I, I, I tend to write kind of busy backgrounds. It's just sort of, sort of how it is. So you get used to it. Here you can see I've got some kind of pyramids happening in the backgrounds. First time each entrance is on its own. Second time we stack up. chords at the end of the progression and looping them into a new thing. These little kind of offbeat uh, triplet things. Put a handoff to Shelton Brown. Sheldon is an amazing advisor. I'm really happy that he's been willing to play my music all these years. Um, he actually started, uh, I first called him because I needed somebody who could do flute and alto saxophone because uh, Evan Francis, who had previously been in the band, um, had left for New York. Um, but then after Sheldon joined, um, I, I heard some of his amazing bass clarinet playing and really wanted to give that a try. Now we're into the horns the end, going on to the next section, the second theme. I really like to have sections where the horns are just playing by themselves, especially something really rhythmic like this. Here I needed a third horn. Um, well, the bass clarinet was playing the counter melody, so I had Fred hand off the bassist to play the part way up high on the bass. So here's Casey Newton on alto saxophone. She 
just sort of fills in the blanks to start with. And then second and third time it takes over more. Now this part actually, I wrote it in three, but it's really like a bar of four and a bar of five. sections as well as different feels kind of you know sends the message of going on a, on a journey now Fred plays the melody by himself splitting up the top and bass line now there's a little kind of chamber vibe here melody in the bass clarinet. Some of the pitch values to fit over the changes the first time through. And we're back into 7 8. And as each Horn finishes the line, they drop out. Ending on a fairly serene note there. 
yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I encourage you to check out uh, the rest of the pieces and, and certainly hear this one without me yapping over it. Um, you can go to iancarry.bandcamp.com. The album's there. It's it's out on Slow and Steady Records um, from San Francisco. And uh, yeah, so please, please check it out. And I hope you enjoyed it. And everybody stay safe. Thanks.